Landfills, the oldest and cheapest way to dispose of municipal and domestic wastes, but also the most primitive and dangerous. Landfills pose environmental and human health risks and catastrophic collapses have been registered in a number of countries, leading to loss of lives, property damages, and long-term ecosystem damages. Yes, the advantage of the landfill is that it is easy to construct and it can be operated by even an expert. But the disadvantage of the landfill is that it requires a lot of land. And then also when we set up the landfill, we invite scavengers and also it's associated with uh, problems like odor. That's why people are resistant to have landfills next to their homes. The which it is was designed is an open area with no uh, serious infrastructure engineering which could have entailed zoning the area in two different compartments uh, following the waste handling cycle. What I mean, there could have been uh, a sorting area uh, into organic and inorganic, decomposable and uh, non-decomposables. There could be another area where uh, they could have contained the leachate. The waste composition at Chitezi is 87% of organic and yard waste. 6% of plastics, 2.2% of paper, and 1.6% of construction waste. And some electrical waste was also identified at the site, though on minimal levels. On 10th August 2024, the biggest landfill in Uganda that received the wastes from Kampala City and surrounding areas of Wakiso collapsed claiming over 35 human lives, with many more missing and presumed dead. No official explanation has been provided for the collapse, but what is widely known is that the landfill had already exceeded its carrying capacity and mountains of garbage were being piled with potential to collapse. The Chitezi landfill was long overdue for closure because by 2011, the Chitezi landfill was supposed to be decommissioned. But the fact that they continued to use it and pile the waste, the waste became unstable and definitely that led to its collapse. Following the collapse of landfill, immediate attention was put on retrieving the survivors and the dead. However, another catastrophe was slowly emerging. The collapsed part of the landfill had occupied the entire valley that contained drainage channels that carried the toxic and smelly water flowing from the landfill, what is called leachate. The same valley contained channels that carry runoff from all the surrounding areas during the rainy seasons. With a blockade of all water flow channels from the landfill and rainfall, flooding disaster was only seconds away. As flooding in Chitezi was basically initially caused by the run of water coming in from rainwater. But eventually the run of got mixed with the leachate turning into that black color. And it's that leachate that carried high levels of salts and acids and other contaminants. Eventually, it led to the drying up of crops of large trees. So we look at a situation where the blockade of the drainage channel led to the water building up, forming a mini lake. And the mini lake was getting mixed with the leachate from the landfill. The leachate is that black liquid which comes from the, from the water seeping through the garbage and it's highly toxic. Toxic landfill leachate continued to spread with the volume getting a boost from the rainfall runoff. The leachate contains highly toxic and dangerous chemicals which can endanger human health 
through contamination of drinking water supplies, agricultural soils, and there is potential uptake of the dangerous chemicals by food crops grown in the area. It's two years before the landfill collapse, we had collected the leached water from the landfill and sent the leached water to the UK lab. And we were testing for the chemical contaminants within that water. We really wanted to know what is it that gets added into the leached as it seeps through the landfill. And so we found that the leachate was higher acidic, the pH going as low as 5.6, but also it had high levels of dissolved elements, elements which can be toxic to the environment, toxic to the living organisms, and even to the human beings. When we tested the salt levels, we found that they were actually much higher compared to normal salts in drinking water supplies. And the problem with these salts is that they can lead to the drying of crops when this leachate gets into gardens. Like the way we saw the leachate in Chitezo was leading to the drying up of large eucalyptus trees, of crops, Actually, there is no crop which survived that landfill, except a few large trees. So among those we looked at, calcium was 11 times more in the leachate than water, potassium was 700 times in the leachate than water, phosphorus was 1,250 times more than the levels in water, while sodium and sulfur was each 30 times higher in the leachate than in the water supplies. And these salts could be originating from the domestic wastes like food wastes, industrial wastes where they use a lot of salts in manufacturing, medicinal products or wastes, and even from other household wastes like detergents. We also looked at the levels of heavy metals or metals within those leached waters, and they were quite high. For instance, aluminium was five times more in the leached than water. Chromium was 105 times the levels found in water. Iron was 26 times higher. Cobalt was 56 times higher than water. Nickel was 20 times higher than water, while copper was 20 times higher. In the case of zinc, it was 17 times higher in leachate compared with normal water supplies. And these metals could be coming from scrapyards, those wastes they collect from scrapyards, electronics which are dumped around the site, we also have a lot of domestic wastes which carry traces of those metals. Some of those metals are found in paints. The third category of toxic elements we looked at included lead and arsenic. These are elements of interest because both of them are carcinogenic. They can lead to human cases of cancer especially when they are in drinking water supplies or food consumed. Arsenic in the leachate was 220 times higher than in normal water supplies, while lead was 20 times higher in the leachate than in the normal water supplies. And now these elements point to the dangers that communities face when fetching water, when collecting food. Because once the food or water contains these elements, they are likely to lead to cases of cancer of various forms once they get into the human tissues. There are also invisible uh, events that are occurring and that are very difficult to monitor. Uh, for example, the gaseous emissions, the aerosols that are going into the atmospheric air that we breathe, 
we are talking of uh, uh, chlorinates, we are talking of uh, sulfides, we are talking of uh, sulfur oxides, we are talking about carbon monoxide, we are talking about carbon dioxide. All of these displace oxygen and they make the air we breathe very dirty and when it gets into our lungs, uh, it can cause cancers, it can cause um, breathing complications. Meet Chiwan Kamathias, a resident of Chitezi area, who like many other unemployed youths, has turned to scavenging for metal scrap and plastics in the landfill and highly toxic leachate waters. To these unemployed youth, the quest to earn a living overrides any health risks or safety concerns. The problem of toxic leachate flow has been evident for a long time in the landfill because the leachate treatment system broke down long time ago. As a result, the raw leachate previously flowed through the channel stream into surrounding areas, sometimes flooding crop fields and contaminating shallow wells and boreholes, especially following heavy rains. The leachate itself is a resource. So basically this leachate should have been channeled into a digester and from the digester they would produce biogas. And then the digested would have been taken through a constructed wetland before it would be released into the water bodies. The collapse of Chitezi landfill, the associated loss of life and property and subsequent flooding of the area with dangerous leachate all point to the risk of using landfills for municipal waste management. Lack of proper designs, failure to observe landfill capacity limits and failure to treat the dangerous leachate before discharge increase the environmental, ecological and human health risks. The slow construction of new drainage channels in Chitezi area to allow flow of water and leachate has left behind highly contaminated agricultural soils, flooded and polluted commercial and residential houses, effects that will have long-lasting environmental and human health consequences. Following the completion of the temporary drainage channel, the large volume of leachate has eventually been allowed to flow downstream, leaving behind a trail of contaminated soils and contaminated public water sources. Some of the food crops that survived the highly toxic flooding will be eventually harvested and consumed by the landowners or sold in the markets, posing public health risks. The highly contaminated soils will continue to be cultivated for food production, putting more lives to risks of food poisoning. At a time when most people think that the disaster associated with the Chitezi landfill collapse ended, it is apparent that the long-term consequences are just beginning. Waste management authorities like KCCA should take hint and monitor what type of waste is dumped at the landfill, which is very key. It's a determinant of what pollutants are exposed to the communities around and to the water bodies. This also goes to the communities that we found along the leachate flow path. We're mainly using this water for domestic use, for cooking, animals are grazing, found grazing on the same water that is fully loaded with pollutants. So my question is, there should be sensitization to all community members that are allocated along the leachate flow path. Not all waste is supposed to go to the landfill because this waste here is a great resource. 
So this waste should be sorted. And the ones which we call the recyclables should be recovered. Otherwise, if we take all waste to the landfill, all that big resource is lost and buried. So this calls for adequate sorting because the waste as it comes, it has different fractions. We have the plastics, we have the metals, we have the, uh, the organic waste, and then we have the inerts, which include things like the soil, the ashes, uh, which are useless. Those are the ones which are supposed to go to the landfill. Now there is this talk of uh, using Chitezu waste as a source of manure in crop field. Whereas it sounds like a good idea, but the manure is highly contaminated, like we've seen with all these metals, salts, and then the toxic, highly toxic elements of lead and arsenic. So, in any case, such manure must be provided to farmers. It must first be cleaned up to remove all these toxic elements. Otherwise, you transfer the toxic elements from the landfill to the crop field, and it could end up in the food chain. And then the crops grown using such manure will be containing the toxic elements. Landfills are not a sustainable solution to waste management uh, because uh, in their existence, they must exist away from communities. But the case of Chitezi and the case of urban centers in Uganda and different municipalities. People are always going to multiply and then they are going to encroach all around the landfill. We were able to do chemical tests on the leachate, but still there are a number of critical tests to be done. One of them is on biological contaminants, the bacteria, the fungi, Also, and there is a critical aspect of testing for microplastics. These are small plastics. We've seen that plastics are quite substantial around each test landfill. And many of them are breaking up into small microscopic pieces. These ones can end up in crops, in public water sources, and they are also known to cause cancers.